y'all, it's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. And I didn't turn on my little speaker, so I'll just talk loud. I talk loud enough for y'all anyway. Everybody knows I talk loud. Um, we are going to finally finish our Bible study on 30 Days to Understanding the Bible. Um, we've just been slammed. It's been crazy. I've hurt my knee. We've been to physical therapy every day. Excuses, excuses, right? And that's really what they are. So, um, I want to finish this up. And the last chapter that we haven't reviewed is the Doctrine of Future Things. And so we're going to talk about that this morning. Um, it's simple and short. Um, it's the return, the judgment, universe, and eternity. And so we're going to just briefly touch on each of these right quick. And then we will be finishing up our book. And I think <clears throat> I have another book to read before I can um, actually do a study on it to make sure I want to. So we may just um, read some different excerpts and scriptures, um, on, you know, at least twice a week with each other um, until I decide if we're going to use another book or not. Okay, so let's start on this and um, we're going to talk about the last doctrine, which is the doctrine of future things. And the first one is the return. And it says that Jesus will return to the earth again. It says, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified, buried, and resurrected about A.D. 30. He ascended into heaven where he has remained for the last 200. No, I'm sorry. Lord, uh, 2,000 um, years. And at some time in the future and from prophetic information... It could be at any time that he would return. He will return to earth. When he does, it will not be as a carpenter's son, but in power and glory, revealing his true cosmic sovereignty. During his first visit to earth, he came as a servant with an emphasis on his humanity. But during his second visit to the earth, he will come as a king, emphasizing his deity. And now here they uh, reference the scripture, Matthew 16, 27, which says, For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Isn't that exciting? I think it's so exciting um, to think about him coming back with his Father and his angels. Um and the fact that when he comes back, he is in glory and splendor, and he doesn't have to be a man in the flesh like he was the first time, and he was he was uh, under submission. You know what I mean? And the next time he gets here, he's he's going to be with power and glory, and it's exciting. It's exciting to think of our Savior in that perspective instead of what he had to do in order to save us. Now, the second, uh, the second doctrine is judgment, and a lot of us don't like to think of this one, but it says at two different times and places, God will conduct audiences um, with all of humanity to confirm our eternal destiny. And those who believe in Jesus and receive him will then be confirmed to eternity in heaven with him. And those who did not believe in him and receive him will be confirmed to eternal separation in hell, away from him. And it says, for we must, and this is the passage in 2 Corinthians 510, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body, according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, um, there's there's... Happiness in this and knowing that we will, those of us who have accepted Christ as our Savior and, and we know that we have received him, um, will be our names will be written in the book of life and we will be uh, forever with him in heaven. But it's also sad to think of those who have rejected him in, in this flesh here on the earth 
and will be thrown into the lake of fire. That's very sad. Um, because who would want to be thrown into the lake of fire with, with the devil and his angels? And uh, it's just awful. So um, that should give us more um, motivation. It takes me a minute to think of words. More motivation to spread his word, the good news of Jesus Christ, and uh, be shining lights in the world. Okay? Um it says the third one is universe. The old universe will be destroyed and replaced with a new one. And this one is crazy to think about. But just listen to this. And those those of y'all who think, I believe that God is who he says he is. And I believe he created the world. But I don't know that, you know, if you're still on that fence about whether or not he created the whole universe whether or not he created things and people, you know, that are way in the past. Um, all you got to do is think about what this says, okay? It says, the present universe was flawed with sin at the time of the fall of man. While much of nature is beautiful, much of it is also destructive and uninhabitable. The universe will be destroyed with an ap ap apocalyptic, Cosmic fire and replaced with a new universe and a new earth that will have no harmful features. Now, if you want to read about this, because this is really interesting, go to 2 Peter 3, 12 and 13 and Revelation 21, verse 4. And you can always rewind this if you need to, to reference the passages. It says, this is, re this is referenced in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And it says, and I saw a new heaven. And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away. And there is no longer any sea. Now, if you have doubt in your mind that God is the, is the creator, then that's, that's not a very good thing. But if you do have doubt in your mind, go ahead and read these passages. Because if he can destroy the heaven and destroy the earth... And bring in a new heaven and a new earth without any sea. That just shows how powerful and it shows that he is our creator. Okay? Um, and those things are going to happen. They're prophetically, you know, um, it's in the Bible. These are the future things. These are what we have to look forward to. Okay, the last one is, to me, the best one. I mean, as far as just, you know, being, it being so personal to me. And it is eternity. Okay? It says, Jesus will reign in the absolute in absolute righteousness. And only goodness and beauty will exist. Now, isn't that a beautiful thing to think about? Only goodness and beauty will exist. Believers will rule with him for, <clears throat> excuse me, believers will rule with him forever as vice regents. And they will govern angelic beings. They will be beings of beauty and power who will participate in the glorious, glorious celestial ceremonies. Believers themselves will receive much personal glory by the grace and goodness of God, as well as spend generous time worshiping and praising God. Intellect, beauty, power, and talent will be virtually limitless. As believers both serve Jesus the King and rule with him in a world that progressively glorifies God and brings great joy and individual satisfaction. Now, it brings great joy and individual satisfaction. Now, we're going to turn to this in the Bible. We're going to read this together. If you have your Bible, turn to John chapter 14. And we're going to read just a few verses to, to close us off this morning. And this is a beautiful passage that you've all heard many, many times. But there's nothing like it in the whole Bible. So go to John 14. I'm going to go in my big text Bible. John 14. I just love my new Bible. It, I can see it so well. It's got enormous text. I'll turn it around and let y'all see it, but it's going to be backwards. It's so big. Okay. Look at all this 
this red print in this chapter because Jesus is talking in most of it, right? So, um, John 14, verse 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. That's beautiful. Now, we're going to go ahead and read just a little bit more because it pertains to it, and it keeps it in context, and that is, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my father also, and from henceforth you know him, and have seen him. So, that's just beautiful. Now, with that said, it, it just states plain as day that he's going to heaven. He's preparing a place for us. He's going to take us back there. He's going to come and get us and take us back there. And not only says that, but if you don't believe in him and you just believe in the Father, then you don't know him. So you have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is who he says he is, that he is divine, that he is part of God. He's part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Because he says plainly, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. So if you're in a place in your life and you believe in God and you believe that God is real and you believe that God created the universe, but you're on the fence about who Jesus really is, or you believe a little bit of what Jesus you know, has said and done, but you don't truly believe that he is God, um, then you need to understand that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by him. And you want him to be preparing a place for you in heaven. You want to be part of the church that gets to go to heaven and live in a beautiful place where there's no sin, where there's joy and happiness forever. Because the only thing you can do besides that is to be sent into hell forever and hell is not a good place and it's not here on earth it is real it is a different place and the Bible speaks let me just say this the Bible a lot of us are on the fence about things that don't even matter okay the Bible doesn't tell us a lot about but the Bible talks a lot about heaven, and even more probably about hell. So don't believe for one minute that it's not real. And if you believe it's not real, you need to pick up this book and start to read so that God can open your eyes and your ears and show you the way, the truth, and the life, okay? Because I want you to be in heaven with us one day. I want us all to be able to have a chance to, to live in total splendor with Christ, our Savior, who will come back with glory, and you are definitely want to go to be part of his team, part of his bride, part of the church, and part of the victory when he does return. Um, I appreciate y'all coming in this morning. I'm sorry that I have been gone. I'm going to pray about and think about what we will be studying, even if I just have to pick up and read scripture and let's touch on it. And, I mean, I'll study it a little bit and make sure I'm in context and stuff, but um, we'll try to do a Bible study at least twice a week. I can't really say for sure which days with our schedule like it is. 
So if you're able to tune in live, that's great. And if you're not, please just check the Real Southern Woman site and um, and just uh, keep posted on it. I get a um, I get a message and it's spam every time I come on Facebook, whether it's live or not, from men, and they're really bad, perverted men. Who have, um, if you go on their, on their Facebook page, they typically have something about Christ, something about the Bible or children in their backdrop. And you think that they're a nice source, but the only time I've ever even spoken to one, um, I was texting him and I asked him, I asked him something about the cooking show and he said, let's cut to the chase. We really know why we're here. So all they want to do is talk dirty and ugly and flirt, and it's gross. And every, what's so aggravating about it is that every single time I log in, every time I'm live, every time I'm on Facebook, they try to friend me. I wish I could get rid of them. I report them as spam every time, but it's like it never ends. It just goes to show that the world is the world. Now, Facebook is a wonderful source, and I appreciate it, but let me just say this. We are enticed. We are um, tempted daily um, in our world uh, to do things that we shouldn't do or think things that we shouldn't think. And I don't even like their doggone, I don't even like them coming in and, and sending me messages. I wish they wouldn't even be on there. I wish they would go away, but they're not going to go away. But um, that just goes to show that one of these days it'll be so nice to live in a world where we don't have that nonsense um, and we don't have men that all they think about are things like that. It will be a really nice place to be in heaven with angels in our Savior where there is no sin and no corruption and just joy and happiness. Let's say our prayers this morning. I hope to see y'all again during the week this week. I love each and every one of y'all, and I've missed you. Um, and y'all just keep me and Chris in your prayers because we got a lot on our plate. Um, and also, we did get a message last night about the show, and it does say for sure they haven't absolutely nailed down the contestants. Even if they're asking us all this stuff, they could still pull the rug out from under us. So, you know, whether or not they do, I, I really think it's terrible that it's three weeks until time to fly out and they still haven't told the families for sure so that, excuse me, so that we can prepare for it. I don't know who they think we are just sitting around with nothing to do, um, but I really wish they'd make their minds up and let us know for sure because my brother has a congregation, he's a pastor and he has a job and he runs a business and it's ridiculous that they are waiting up into the last minute to let the families know a definite answer. Uh, so y'all keep your keep, keep us in your prayers with that. Um, and let's say our prayers this morning. Happy Saturday, right? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your son who came here so that we could get away from this body of flesh and conquer sin daily through your Holy Spirit so that we could live spiritually here on earth and not just physically and have an abundant life through you. Uh, we know that there's nothing good in us unless it comes through you. Uh, for your word says there is none good, no, not one. May we always reflect on that. Maybe we all, may we always realize who we really are and who you are so that it keeps us in perspective and keeps us in a place that we know we need you in our lives. And without you, we are nothing. But with you, we can accomplish many things. Um, be with each and every one of us. Be with those who join the study. May you bless them and bless their lives. And thank you so much for everything you do for each and every one of us. Um, 
And I pray that if it would be your will that us go to California, we'd still be able to go. And if it's not, we would be here. Either way, I'm absolutely fine with it. I will not even be, I will not even be uh, too disappointed if we don't get to go because I know you're in control. Um, in Christ's name we pray and trust in you. Amen. Bye, y'all. Love you. Happy Saturday.